All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the kickoff of this virtual cleanup. We're really excited to have you be a part of this. This is a format for cleanups that's been relatively new. It's been new here in 2020 for Save the Sound, and we're looking forward to, to getting you involved in this way, especially during this time when physical distancing is so important and you know, we're really trying to take extra precautions and extra steps during the COVID-19 pandemic. This virtual format is our way of getting everyone involved, no matter where you are uh, in the state of Connecticut, you can participate in a virtual cleanup. And so today, during this session, we're gonna run you through not just why cleanups in general are so important, but also how to participate in a virtual cleanup from wherever you are in your own community and still be counted and still be part of uh, the international coastal cleanup and the local effort here in Connecticut, which is the 2020 Connecticut cleanup. So we appreciate you taking this time and we're looking forward to, uh, to working with you in this way. So today I'm joined by Bill Lucy, the Long Island Soundkeeper, uh, and Bill is going to, to get things started here for us with a presentation about plastics, which for years now has been Save the Sound's focus during our cleanup effort, during this cleanup season, as we refer to it, for some very, very good reasons that Bill is going to touch on. And, and I think perhaps now more than ever, it's important to keep this focus on plastics because one of the things we've seen during the pandemic is this sort of return or seeking out of, of single use plastics and personal protective equipment or PPE, which is so often made of plastic and single use disposable. So without further ado, uh, I'm gonna throw it over to Bill. So Bill Lucy, Long Island Soundkeeper, uh, take it away. Okay, well, thanks for the introduction, Anthony. Here is a few slides. Um, that gives an overview of plastics, the problems with plastics, and what we can do as people uh, involved in society and how we could start addressing this problem I'm going to describe. So first, I'll just give a quick background on Save the Sound for those of you who might not be familiar with us. Um, we are an action-oriented organization, and we lead environmental action in, in the all the Long Island Sound region. That includes Long Island, Westchester, New York City, and Connecticut. Uh, we're involved in climate change. Uh, we do a lot to protect endangered land, such as Plum Island. Uh, we protect the sound through clean water enforcement. And also we restore its rivers and we try and restore the productivity of our natural ecosystems. This map is what we call an impact map. It gives you sort of an idea of the scope and breadth of where we are um, working in the Long Island Sound region. Uh, the yellow are legal actions. These are typically uh, clean water actions, though not all, always, where we enforce uh, clean water standards on polluters. Pollution actions, um, those are where we're responding to spills. Um, we have ongoing issues. We work on policy to uh, try and address that. Uh, water monitoring. This is one of our big programs. We have all these little orange spots are bacteria sampling and all these orange bays all around the sound are part of a unified water study where we have over 20 groups, citizen groups that are taking water quality measurements every two weeks for a period of five to six months. And that way we keep a pulse on the Long Island Sound's ecological health. So as we have policies that change and improve water quality, we'll have baseline data to track that. We also are heavily involved in green infrastructure, uh, rain gardens, bioswales, and I'll talk a little bit about that. As I mentioned before, land preservation. We've preserved 18,000 acres in Connecticut alone over the years, uh, saving it from development. We're working out here on Plum Island. We're really close to getting that island into the public domain. Um, Fish passage, one of my personal favorites, remove dams to let all the fish free, free passage from the sound up into the river to spawn, climate, and of course the focus of this talk is beach cleanups. 
So one thing to know about plastic pollution that ends up in the, the ocean, the majority of it globally is generated nearby. So it's a regional issue. This is not only the, always the case, which I'll touch on briefly, but this is actually our region. This is the Long Island Sound watershed. So theoretically, someone driving down the road in Quebec that flicks out a cigarette butt out their car window can go into a highway drain, down into a stream, down the Connecticut River, out Long Island Sound, and end up on your favorite beach. So that shows the connectivity of our watershed. So any pollutants that are in this watershed ultimately come down into the sound. Um, so we want to look at regional solutions because that's the part that we can control most. Um, we need to look at policy, industry practices. These are all things I'm going to uh, touch on. Diverse funding to make these solutions happen. Um, this concept of the circular economy where, where there is no waste generated and then personal action. It used to be the three R's, now it's the four R's, four R's, refuse, reuse, reduce, recycle. Um, in any of those orders, you uh, want to not use plastic when you don't have to. So going globally for just a, a, a short minute, because we can't solve everything locally. Uh, I was in Alaska for a number of years and did beach cleanups for about eight of those. And this is a picture after the Fukushima tsunami uh, all these aquaculture floats came from Japan and ended up on the Alaskan coastline uh, in under a year. And how we knew it, there was this volleyball that washed up and you could see the writing. And I was fortunate enough to have uh, NHK, which is the Japanese version of uh, PBS television station, come over and document these, uh, this trash that had washed up from the tidal wave. And they translated this volleyball and one of them, one of these signatures, these are names, was from Fukushima. So they were actually able to bring this volleyball back to Japan and give it back to the family of one of these names. And that ball had been on the mantle of their grandfather who had been in Fukushima. And that town, if you've ever seen the documentary, that town was entirely wiped off the map. So it was a fairly powerful moment where that volleyball was the grandfather's spirit returning to the family because they never did find them. So this just to try to illustrate the global connectivity of the trash problem. Uh, the other thing that we need to remember is that a lot of what we see is just the tip of the iceberg. Plastic can be a killer. Uh, this was actually trawl web on a sperm whale. For a number of years, I responded to whale strandings, marine mammal strandings. And though I can't say this trawl web killed this whale, uh, I hypothesized that it grabbed the cod end of a fishing trawler, and maybe got stuck in it, and then tore out potentially after it drowned. Um, and the next day, this whale washed out to sea. So there's a lot of unseen impacts uh, to plastic that virtually everywhere in our ocean ecosystem now. And the one we really can't see are the microplastics. And they are everywhere. They have been found in food crops, in uplands where they've spread sewage on fields and there's microplastics in the sewage and that can get into your food. Out in the water, there's about 5,000 pieces of microplastic per uh, square meter of uh, Long Island Sound seawater. That's Yukon data out on the east end. And here's a picture of a trawl that I did a couple years ago. I did a series of trawls just to get an idea of what's out there. And every trawl I did had bits and pieces. Here's a plastic bag film. Here's one of those micro beads that you've probably heard a lot about, little chunks of plastic. Here's a piece of rope or a fiber. Um, it's everywhere and it's getting ingested into the food web. So this is a growing concern. The impacts are becoming more fully understood as these bits and pieces may be transporting toxins into the food chain. So what do we want to do to stop that? Well, there are a number of things. Bioswales are a great way to catch stormwater debris that's coming off our streets. All the cups and junk you see that's on the, on the roads. 
So the rain comes down here, those that floods into this bioswale at Save the Sound makes a lot of these and it catches all this stuff and through regular maintenance, you can go pick it up. Otherwise that plastic bag or cup will go right down the storm drain, right into the stream, right out into the ocean, get broken down by the sun and wave action and turn into microplastic. Here's another concept that's being more increasingly uh, co common. Uh, this is called a band along litter trap. There's lots of versions of this. Uh, our, one of our partners, the Bronx River Alliance, has a boom across the Bronx River that catches all the floatable bottles and trash that's coming down. And then, of course, you can clean this out and take it to the landfill or recycling center, depending on what it is. This prevents it from getting to the ocean, turning into microplastic. This is a local example between Bridgeport and Stratford. Uh, Representative Joe Gresco is working to get this creek cleaned up. There's all kinds of windblown trash in here and storm drain deposited trash. This may be a spot where we could try a small version of this trap, hopefully maybe next year, and intercept this before it enters into uh, Bridgeport Harbor. So Save the Sound is a leader in Connecticut. We actually manage the international coastal cleanup for the state. And we have uh, over 70 cleanups we did last year. And we had uh, three tons of trash that we picked up, over 2,500 volunteers. So a lot of people are involved. And what we do is we break it down by, and this is very important for your cleanup, we want to break it down by category. And then we can look at plastic bags, plastic straws, for example. So let's say we get a bottle law modernized. So the bottles are now worth seven or 10 cents and more people are returning them. Less bottles should end up being thrown out the window. The plastic bag ban will, is something that will take effect, has been in effect. It was on hiatus for COVID, but over the years, this plastic bag number should drop because there were laws changed to get rid of those sources of single use. And of course, my favorite, and aspect of this is you've got to get kids interested in stewardship of the earth young. That's how I was. I grew up in the 70s. Everything was about recycling and taking care of the earth. And that is really where it all starts. We need a continuous stream of people that are good stewards. So here's a, a just looking at trash trends over time from our data. Uh, I mentioned cigarette butts starting in Canada potentially, that is really common. So whenever you see someone throw a cigarette butt out the window on the highway, know that it's probably gonna end up in the beach because it's gonna get washed into your storm drain system and it's gonna head out the door. Um, balloons, I can't tell you how many balloons I see floating around Long Island Sound every time I go out. We have a special net to grab them. So this is a, um, one thing we do is track these declines. Uh, I mentioned polystyrene specifically just because everyone should support and expect legislation in the 2021 Connecticut legislative session um, to ban single use polystyrene um, products. There is a business owner who's also a state senator and she has a food service. She switched away from these. She knows that you, that food service, um, Businesses can use other products. There's really no need to use this anymore. It's highly toxic. It can attract toxins and to recycle it is extremely expensive and there are no facilities here. So it's best just to not do this. There's many other options out there. They're using f fungus now, mushroom mold, they're using corn, they're using banana leaves. There's all kinds of things because our goal really is to not have trash. We want it to compost. Um, so we want to get rid of these single-use plastic bands. If it has to be single-use, why not make it compostable? So that's the holy grail. Um, and this brings us up to the, sh the, the circular economy. So let's say I get a package full of molded mushroom for so my TV doesn't break in transit. I can throw that into a composting facility or hopefully my backyard compost and then I can turn it into my apple trees or I can turn it into my raspberry bushes and that becomes food and that gets composted back. So you design these systems to not have any pollution and just keep it going around. 
If it's a washing machine, bring it back, take the guts out, put in new components and resell that washing machine, or maybe even melt down the metal and use it for something else. And we've come a long way uh, since the old days of the open dump. So the circular economy is something we have to embrace in all our manufacturing systems. Um, and then of course, to drive all this, we need strong ocean policy. One to keep an eye out is Healthy Oceans 2.0. This is Senator Murphy uh, over at, looks like Stratford Point, um, talking about the importance of Long Island Sound of the region's economy and the increased viability, economic viability when those waters are clean, when the shellfish are clean, when the fisheries are abundant. Everybody has a better time, there's more money to be made and the ecosystem's just happier and healthier. And one thing specifically in Healthy Oceans 2.0 is a doubling of the marine debris funding for nationwide cleanups. Um, and so why do we do all this? We're not the only residents of the planet. We tend to get caught in our own frame of mind, but we need to remember that we're sharing this planet with all sorts of other life forms. This is a Laysan albatross. You can see its belly full. There's a big lighter and bits and pieces of plastic it picked up and starved to death. This is a chick. Here's a chick that's alive and there's the parent. This is a picture of my son um, on Kauai where I worked for three years. And a friend of mine took care of the Laysan albatross colonies and put fences up to protect them from cats and dogs. And uh, she worked with Cornell on this. So they had cameras and you could watch them. And these birds are ancient. They have no fear of humans. You can walk up to them and they'll, they'll come up to you, clack their beak, and they'll actually do ceremonies. After this photo, about seven adult albatross got in a circle around my son and my wife and did the albatross dance. And they're clacking their beats and they're weaving and bobbing. And then they just go back to their thing. They're not doing it to chase us away. I don't know why they do it, but it was an incredibly powerful experience. So we're part of the planet, so we need to try and figure out ways to get to a sustainable future. So quick recap, refuse, reduce, reuse, recycle, buy products that are already in the circular economy, uh, join your cleanups, your beach and river cleanups, which Anthony's about to talk to you about. We even have some undersea cleanups if you're a diver out east. Uh, when there's legislation, show up, write letters, show up at the, at the legislator, uh, at the, the committee meetings and support single use bans. Um, work with Save the Sound or whoever to construct rain gardens, any kind of green infrastructure. We really need to get stormwater management funded in this state. Um, one thing I didn't mention before is filters on washing machines. A large portion of microplastics comes from washing our clothes. If you look at all the lint in the dryer, that's also coming out in your washing machine. And you can, the best filters are inline filters, are not that expensive, and you can put them on your outflow hose, and that grabs the, the, the lint that's in your washing machine before it goes into your, either your sewer system and out to the sewage treatment plant or your septic tank, which is going to get pumped by a, a truck at some point and brought to a sewage treatment plant. And all that fiber ends up in our waterways. And then finally, just support creative solutions in any form you can, which are all of these. So um, we're not really in the format for questions, but please feel free to reach out to me at this email if you do. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Anthony to tell you exactly how to participate in our virtual cleanup. Thank you. All right, thanks so much for that, Bill. And there's so much of what Bill just went over that is critically important. and uh, it's going to tie into a lot of what we talk about here today in, in this section on how to participate in the virtual cleanup format. But I'll say quickly that one of the things we're most excited about here with this format is that it brings the focus more so away from or, or detaches it from being just about the coast. It's not just about the coast. What you just heard Bill say is, you know, I can flick a, a cigarette butt out the window of my car in, in Canada and it can end up on a beach in the Sound or it can end up in Long Island Sound itself. And 
And so it's all really connected. So it really doesn't matter wherever you live in Connecticut, you live in a watershed. And so it's important to recognize your connection to waterways and to take this view of, of shared responsibility. So let's get into this. How do we participate? How do you participate in, in a virtual cleanup? Well, the first step is to gather your group, your cleanup squad. Uh, you know, this can be the folks that you are currently living with and quarantining with. In fact, we, we recommend that, um, you know, for, again, for safety's sake. And also just, you know, to, to share the experience together. This is a way to get outside. It's a way to, to go out and, and make a difference during a time when a lot of us uh, are sort of cooped up a lot in our homes. I know I know I have been. Uh, so go out in small groups. We're recommending that you go out in, in pairs, but if you if you go out alone or in up to up to four people, that's just fine. Uh, so again, preferably those you already have contact with. And we also have noticed that this works best when there's groups of groups. Right, so if you're part of a network in your town that focuses on the environment or uh, has some other kind of connection and you wanna get that whole group involved, we'd love to see that happen because the accountability of being in person at a cleanup and showing up and being together for that time, we can't directly mirror that. This sort of format where we, we come together online, we come together virtually to, to give direction and to get excited and get started sort of replaces that. And so we'd love to see folks reach out to their networks and reach out to their groups and, you know, maybe set up a system where you're, you're, you know, planning where in the town each group is going to go uh, to clean up. So once you have your group, uh, you need your spot. So there's a couple important things to note here. First is that we're, we're looking for publicly accessible places. So uh, not, to, not to go uh, tracing onto <laughs> private land, but there's plenty of places in your community and you would know better than, than anyone where those places are that need cleaning up. And right now in particular, when these outdoor green spaces are parks, our beaches, our riverbanks, they've been there for us during this time. They've, they've provided a respite uh, for so many people and they're, they we're seeing elevated use of those spaces during COVID. And so you might wanna focus there and seek out those public spaces that are getting heavy use and as a result are seeing a lot of uh, trash being left behind. So those are great places to, to target. Uh, but really, anywhere there's trash, uh, if you know of a place uh, in your community that you can access and you know it to be a trash repository, go for it. And record what you find. So once you're there, once you have your group and you're in it, you're picking trash up, we want to know what you're getting. And just like in, you can see here, the paper form, uh, that the Ocean Conservancy puts out uh, and that we give to all of our in-person volunteers, they also, the Ocean Conservancy also has an app. It's called Clean Swell. So the Clean Swell app, you can download that to your phone and it has sort of a, a, a simplified grouping of categories of trash. It's not overly simplified. Well, the data is still very, very, very helpful. Um, but you can actually just do that on your phone and you can put in the group name and say, save the sound and then, you know, uh, name your group after that. And it'll let you record in real time as you go, just with a, a touch of the screen, each item that you're picking up. And so we're looking for folks to, to do that and to help us out by, by submitting that data, not only to the Ocean Conservancy, but also save the sound, can access all of that data, and it helps us immensely in action that we take at the, uh, the legislative level, 
and all of our adv advocacy work to help turn off the tap, some of that work that Bill talked about with uh, ocean policy. And finally, share your photos. We encourage you to take photos of the trash that you're finding, any unusual items you're finding. You see a bike there that was pulled out of uh, a river uh, last, I think that was last year. And take pictures of, of the trash and of yourself and your group and post them to Facebook or Instagram or both and use the official event hashtags. For anything that has to do with the International Coastal Cleanup or this year's effort, which is the, the 2020 Connecticut cleanup, that hashtag is CT Cleanup 2020. So go ahead and use that hashtag and tag Save the Sound. We have our handles here for Facebook and Instagram. Tag our organization and any other organizers uh, that uh, are part of putting together that particular virtual cleanup. We have several um, that are going to happen this year. And Include your location in those posts. We'd love to know where you're at and where you're cleaning up so we can see the expanded reach of this format. If you have any questions about the format, if, you if you're unclear on how to participate, if you're having trouble uh, finding the app, um, or if you are just sort of stymied by any part of that, you, know, you can reach out to us at Save the Sound and we'd be more than happy to, to help you figure that out. Otherwise, we just encourage you to get out there. You can do one cleanup, you can do 10 cleanups. You can clean up every day in September if you want to. And we encourage you to, uh, to go out and really see the state of trash in your community too. Um, I know normally we have these set cleanup sites and we go and we clean them up and, and that's that. And we choose those sites because we know they have a lot of trash, but there's a lot of places that we don't know about. And so it's also helping us if you identify repositories for trash in your communities, that can help us in future years too identify uh, new spots for groups um, that, that can meet up in person. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of this. Thank you for helping us in this effort and for recording your data. Uh, it goes a long, long way and we really appreciate all the volunteers that come out every year. We had, like Bill said, 2,500 of you came out last year. Uh, you know, there's no reason to think that 2,500 couldn't come out this year, uh, just not all in person. But there are also in-person cleanups this year. So if you are interested in that as well, you can go to savethesound.org 2020 cleanup. And there's a listing there of all of the public in-person cleanups. So. With that, I want to say thanks to Bill uh, again for giving us that, that wonderful talk and that wonderful uh, background on why this, this work is so important. And I want to thank all of you once again for, uh, for being part of this. And, and finally, I want to thank uh, Subaru of New England who has returned once again as our official sponsor of the Connecticut Cleanup in 2020. Bill, do you just have any final words? Go out there and have fun. That's half of what this is, is you're helping things out, but, but enjoy your time outside. Thank you very much for being interested. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everyone. We look forward to seeing you out there. Let's get this cleaned up.